This is Khan Zenshu, the podcast, episode 336 for the week of June 16th, 2013. What up, A.L.S.? Welcome to Kanz and Shu. The podcast. An extension of the all-encompassing Dragon Ball fan site. Kanz and Shu. We cover anything and everything Dragon Ball in hopes of enlightening and a little bit of entertaining, gracing us two episodes in a row. I'm so happy. Mary, how you doing over there? Oh, it's weird being in the basement two weeks in a row. I try to avoid it when possible. Well, to be fair, no episode last week. True, so, true. so. Two episodes in a row, but not two weeks good, in a row. Good, good. This place is a... Uh, it's full it's of... It's like half a studio, half warehouse. It's a, a jump warehouse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it warehouse. is kind of a jump warehouse. <laughs> it's a jump wholesale store. It's like the Sam's Club of jump. How much would you pay for a pile of last month's weekly jumps? I would jumps? get rid of it for free. <laughs> Please. It's so the funny. archive room Anyone? now. All right. And also joining us across ye internet's Heath. What up, dude? Uh, It's Father's Day. Yes. Happy to you. Thank you. Happy Father's Day to Julian as well. Mm-hmm. If he were here. If he were. But he's not. In he's spirit. sleeping. You gave him the day off. I did. And I'm sure he's very appreciative. Deserves it. The night off because <laughs> Well, yes. Is. Uh, Things are going good. Just super busy. You know, that time of year. I hear you. Work. Yay. And a kid and family. Uh huh. And yeah. Excellent. Fun times. That leaves me. My name is Mike Vegito EX. So, in celebration of Father's Day, what we're going to do is talk about dads in the series. We've always, remember, I think we've always wanted to have your mom on the show to talk oh, about how bad of a right. father Goku is. Damn, this would have been a great episode to have her over. We're not doing that. <laughs> well, I will channel her as best I can because I think we oh, share great. a lot of the same opinions. So, you will channel your mom as we talk about the dads in the series. There are a few that uh, you, you can probably expect we will talk about about Goku being one of them. But I think we pulled a couple other fun ones that you might not think about. Just no real serious discussion here. We're just going to toss some ideas around, see who's a good dad, who's a bad dad, that kind of stuff. We got a little bit of news catch up to do. We got that topic, and I think we're going to hit a couple emails. So let's just jump right back into the groove of the show. Last time here on the show, it was one of those, if we record on Friday, you know there's going to be news on Saturday. So I had to do a little insert to kind of catch up on that news. But now that I have people to talk about it with me, let's do that. Heath, what were your thoughts on the contents of the Battle of Gods limited edition sets? I think it's kind of hit and miss. Really? Okay. I, I think they could have done a little more with it, but I'm very happy with what we're actually getting because we haven't really had a release like this almost ever. No, no, not with Dragon Just Ball. because... You know, there hasn't been anything that's come out and right away it comes out on DVD. So this is kind of a first in this sense. We've had the Dragon Box sets, but those were collections of older material. So, right. yeah, all the extras and that's And I don't think on. anyone ever anticipated much for Kai no, as far no, as not extras. I mean, they inserted little booklets and that was nice. We got interviews. Um, but this, we get a nice wall hanging figure and a couple other things. Uh, Maybe some bonus content. That's what I really want to know what's going to be on that disc exactly. Right. But we won't really know that, I think, until we actually get it in our hands. Mary, when you and I were talking about it before we knew the actual contents of it, and we still only kind of know a little bit of it, you were saying you wanted some of that behind the scenes footage, things leading up to the movie and the recording studio, that kind of stuff. And it does sound like we'll have a little bit of that on the extras disc. Excellent. So is that what you're looking for the most? It is. I mean, I'm less of the physical packaged in goods although that's nice mm -hmm. i mean it's like a little bit of that but i don't yeah. want that to be the only thing there is so the fact that there's going to be some content as well as um you know the physical stuff is very nice right we know that there will be some stuff on the feature disc and then there's an entire second disc of extras seemingly so looking Good forward to, see to them that actually put effort so that's the battle of god set that is due out what was it september 13th i think we're looking at um uh, here's the problem mary we're going on vacation <laughs> as soon as this comes out. This has been tearing at you. For me, it's like, oh, yeah, whatever. I'll take vacation over, you know, this release any day of the week. So it's kind of funny to see you get all flustered about like, oh, my God, we're not going to be home for it. It just shows how dedicated you are. Or is it 
going to just sit on your stoop. Well, that's the thing that we're worried about. It's because it's going to be sitting out for presumably days and we don't know what the weather will be like. But my family, I mean, my parents will come over and check up on the cats and all that good stuff. So Mike's trying to time it such that maybe we can have the movie delivered on a specific day and then kind of warn my mom, okay, between 6 and 8 p.m. or, or something like that. Be at our house because the man with the delivery will come. Well, it's FedEx signature required. So even if they don't hit it, they're not, they're not going to oh, leave it there. True. So no one can come steal my battle of gods. Don't get any crazy ideas. Damn. I was totally going to fly out because I need an extra copy. <laughs> Spend the money instead of buying it yourself to fly out and get sure. That makes total sense. <laughs> yeah, it does. All right. Let's wrap things around to a totally different entirely different style of home video release this is the rock the dragon edition coming from funimation i still feel like this isn't a thing it's like it's it not real really sunk in i yeah. know it's one of those odd things that we knew was coming yeah, but yeah. it just it doesn't feel real i don't know mary as someone who lived through all of this and i loved it tell me every second I yeah. did. what are your thoughts on funimation's timing of this release in 2013 i think also taking into consideration all of the releases that have come out and have been canceled along the way to right, 2013 right, right like that that's the Blu-rays. Uh, yeah. And in consideration that you haven't been reading all the comments online like <laughs> right. Mike has. Oh, yeah. And I, I, I really don't know what the public opinion is on mm-hmm. this, which is probably good because I kind of want to have my own opinion on this and that I'm fairly neutral about the subject. But mm-hmm. to answer your question about timing, I guess it makes sense because Funimation always has to have something new Dragon Ball on the shelves for people to go out and buy. And yeah. this hits nostalgia factor in a big fat way. Which is huge. Where I'm at, I mean, I still have my VHSs of what I taped off the TV back when it first aired in syndication. And I have the official VHS releases. Oh, you do. Okay, so between us, we have that. We have the official ones. I only have a couple of the DVDs. DVDs. I didn't buy the entire DVD run of the first mm-hmm. dub. So for us, it's kind of like, oh, it's it like, not, makes yeah, sense. We're not hurt. Well, I was going to say for this household, we're not hurting for these releases because we have them in, in various forms. So more convenient than others. Right. But to have just a one DVD collection, that makes sense. So it's the whole stretch of what was it? 52 episodes? 53. Yeah. Plus 53. the three movies. Yeah. Okay. What? Okay. For my ignorant ass self, yes. what is public opinion on this release? Uh, it seems anyone who's our age is like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, I'll probably buy it. And anyone that did not live through the voice change is like, oh, the voices suck. This is stupid. I like Funimation. Not realizing that this is Funimation, Funimation. who right. made this. It's just not the voices. It's Ocean Group. Right. And don't get me wrong. Some of the voices do suck. And, uh, uh, you know, we... We are guilty of the nostalgia factor. Where they we nostalgically probably, suck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> kind of like how you know fans of the other dub. You know, I, I don't know if they're that self-aware, but had the nostalgically suck kind of yeah, feelings yeah. about it. It's weird to be talking about English dubbed releases here on the show, mm-hmm. but because this was part of the thing that kicked our age bracket into overdrive with the series, it's an important piece of history, and I think it's good that Funimation's releasing it. I'm not sure that right now is the best time, but if not now, when kind of thing? Hmm. When could I don't be even a good know time? if there is a real good time. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just a, well, we have it. We might as well just put it out. Right. Z- Make a couple books. But it's weird because it is something they could have done, you know, 10 years ago. Yeah, they could have done it whenever. But there was. But they didn't <sighs> worry about sales 10 years ago. Yeah, I mean, there was still. Coming out. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're doing that part of the series itself and now it's so far removed and who knows what the plan is for the remainder of Kai right now. So it's like, it kind of like seems like they're almost banking on the nostalgia factor. I mean, I of think at are. this point you have to, right. I don't think there's any other way around it. You're not going to get new fans coming into no. this set. So let's say accidentally buy it. <laughs> Which for Dragon Ball, who knows? I'm just waiting for Funimation to start getting emails from fans saying, why don't you continue the rest of the series like this? Well, and then a lot of people have been asking, could Funimation put out the continuation of the series with the Ocean Studios voice actors mm-hmm. that... From the UK? Right, the alternate yeah. dub that was made, but Funimation didn't produce that, so they would have to license that. And would they bother licensing that for a market that never had that in the first place? Mm-hmm. What ev? So, so I guess the target audience for this is uh, making assumptions about age groups. Just trying to think back how old I was back then. Let's see, I'm so let's say uh, so maybe 27 and older. Yeah, this set is for yeah, pretty much. I've seen quite a few people that are younger than us didn't live through this. They're like, 
oh, it's an important piece of history. I'll pick it up in that regard. And that's cool to see. Mm-hmm. But I don't overwhelmingly think that they will go and pick it up. All right, let's leave that behind. Let's talk a little bit about current news. Dragon Ball Heroes Ultimate Mission. This thing, I don't get it. I don't get it. What? It's staying on the charts. It refuses to die. It refuses. It's staying steady now. That's but cool, though. It is cool. The last couple of weeks, it's held over 5,000 sales each week. It's 14th week, it did 5,301 copies. And then it's 15th week, it did 5,148 copies. So even on the media create list, which is a little more conservative, I think, uh, it's past 200,000 copies. Famitsu's got it at just over 210,000 copies. I mean, it's in every V-Jump with a new QR code promoting things in it in the arcade game. Is there anything we can say about this that we haven't already been saying for the last three months? It's like, I haven't put my hands on the game. You would just think that in Japan, whoever wanted the game would probably have it by now, yet they just keep selling more. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. There's nine-year-old born every day, I suppose, as a wise man once said. Wow. Talk about nostalgia. Yeah, I said it. So unfortunately, we have to wrap up the news with one of these. We hate doing this. We hate waking up to this news we haven't done one of these in a while so i don't even remember how we appropriately cover this you just this. gotta get into it all right so kenji utsumi who dragon ball fans will primarily know as the voice of shenlong did pass away this last week at the age of 75 this is one of the bigger voices in the series mary i think you and i were talking the other day it's one of those voices unlike daisuke gori who just booming and you can pick him out all the time utsumi in dragon ball was kind of i want to say a little more reserved maybe his roles were more reserved i don't know how to kind of put this in words heath what do you what was your take on utsumi in the series i think that's a good way to put it reserved he always had a presence but not overwhelming but not underwhelming because he typically got fairly significant roles but they weren't your average roles i would say yeah you know he was never really the main character right a lot of times he was more of a supporting not even background he he got really good roles that weren't dominant overwhelming and in every freaking episode right yeah so now he'll be missed yeah as always some of the other roles he played in the series you think about this you're like oh my god i i did hear this person constantly he played the Tenka Ichi Budoka announcer for the uh, first TV series, 21st, 22nd, 23rd tournaments. Uh, he also played Commander Red. He did Mutaito. And then he did Rakum over in the uh, early Frieza arc. Uh, just pretty wide variety of roles there. You've got kind of the reserved, stoic master kind of role. But then you go to Rakum. He's who's, like off the wall. Yeah. Silly. Yeah. Yeah. He's saying he's got that weird cackle laugh, and then he says Veggie Chan. It's just that's 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 acting, man. <laughs> did a great job. And why? Uh, what did he pass away from? Uh, there was some kind cancer. of cancer oh. that he had going on. Um, yeah, not good. Cancer's the thing. So, um, Utsumi, another one where he did all these roles in Dragon Ball, but he played so many other characters and so many other things. He, he was in everything of the day. Uh, and Toriyama related, he was Senbei in Dr. Slump. So, mm-hmm. uh, and of course, as I noted in the update right now, we've got Disco Tech who just announced that they're putting out the first five Dr. Slump movies. So, if you're looking to hear Utsumi in another kind of role, very different from his Dragon Ball roles. That's a, a great one to check out. So Kenji Utsumi passed away at the age of 75 this week. The voice of Shenlong, among others. We will miss him. So there's no appropriate way to transition out of that. So I will just let the bumper music take care of it. And we'll go over to our topic. This week we're talking about dads. Heath, you and Julian, you're dads the dads. Grads. That's dads right. Grads. <laughs> what grads do we have, Gohan? Gohan, he's a great scholar. He went to Harvard, man. That's about it. It's the only one we got. Uh, so I kind of want to just toss some names around. You can tell this is one of those Mike came up with the topic idea at 11 mm-hmm. p.m. last but night. I like but I think it's a great like topic. That. Yeah, yeah. It is Just fun. shout out a name and go with our gut. Like, what's the first word that pops in your head? Is that the way you want to do it? To like, initial thoughts? Well, well Kind of do like the first word that pops into your head and then, you know, we'll expand go on off it. On. But I kind of want all of us to go off of our gut reaction okay. about the characters. So we'll do that. I will toss out a dad to marry you and Heath you. And I want to get your 
that gut reaction, one word or two words, what do you think about him? Then we'll kind of toss him around a little bit. So Mary, start us off. I think the number one dad in the series, Dr. Brief. <laughs> Irreverent. <laughs> Irreverent. All right, Heath, what's your uh, initial take on him? Um, geniusly perverted. That's pretty good. Now, Dr. Brief, what I love about him, especially very early on in the series, I forget, was it right after all the Pilaf stuff or whenever Goku goes to visit the family, both him and his wife are like talking about openly cheating on each other and they're just kind of doing oh, whatever. Uh, Red Ribbon Army? Yeah, or? maybe around there. Yeah, it was yeah. Red Ribbon. And Bulma's just like, don't talk like that in front of me. It's just... They don't. They don't care. No, whatever. It seems like he lets Bulma do whatever she wants. Uh huh. He's like, that's nice, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like the cool dad again. He's uh, a he, little, a little um, freewheeling. So Capsule Core is off the party dad. house when she's in high school. Exactly. They have all yeah. the kids over. Oh, come on over, have a drink with us. Yeah, is that kind of dad? It's like, He's got like he the wants. maid robots. This weird fixation with a cat. <laughs> yes. He's got Star Wars posters all over the place. Uh, he knows the police, apparently. So Seems kind of like a, a hippie that's gone straight, but still Maybe. likes to keep he that side. He has kind of the fathering attitude of, I don't care what you do as long as you don't get arrested. Yeah. <laughs> but if much. you do, I know the police, so it'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. He's always guys. smoking. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, I forgot about that. Smoking what, though? Oh, oh, see, that's a good question. He's a hippie. Again. Keeping in that old style there. All right, let's move on. I think that's all we can say about Dr. Brief. Here's a fun one. Mary, first thoughts. When I say Piccolo Daimao, as a father, sort of. Wait, Piccolo Daimao? Yes. As in, as Demon in King Ball, Piccolo, yes. As in the wrinkly old one? Yes. As a father to the Mazoku, but also to himself in a way. I can't come up with the right word to eat. I'm trying to say, like, he uses his kids. Uh -huh. That's the right word to describe using. Manipulative? Selfish? Sure. All say. those things. Um, Manipulative. Never there. Never, never there. <laughs> <laughs> never there for them. All right. Uh, Mary, give me some more. What, what do you think about the way he treats his children? I wish I remembered more about that. I've only ever read it once, and I don't remember if I've watched it. I probably watched it once. Yeah, I think you and I watched it once. Definitely um, well, read it. He seems very emotionally attached because he gets really pissed, like when Tambourine dies. Right, he can feel like it that. when they're killed. Like he knows that a part of him has kind of been ripped out of him in a way when they are But at the same killed. time, every time they die, it's because he sent them off on a mission to kill people. Exactly. <laughs> right. Which is why I said manipulative. Uh huh. Like they're really only there to serve his purposes. Uh huh. They seem happy to, but I guess they're all just evil. So whatever. I never really thought of him as a dad. No, well, that's why I tossed it on the list. Yeah, it's very different. <laughs> and Ma Junior, I guess you could think of him as betraying his father, right? Because he was supposed to kill Goku, and they end up becoming the best of friends. I'm not going to listen take car to my classes dad. Together. Screw you, Dad. I'm going to go off and do my own thing. It's kind of what yeah, it turns that sounds into. familiar. Except Smoke cigarettes and. <laughs> <laughs> and drive cars yes. and stupid teenagers. And wear my hat backwards or maybe forwards. I'm rebelling, Dad. Uh, but then we do get that Piccolo. No, I'm I'm still Piccolo Daimao and he bursts off. And who's standing there with him? Is it good it in? He's just like, oh, that's so cute. He thinks he's still evil. <laughs> good times. All right. I don't know how much else we can say about him. Let's go over to some of the larger, more important dads in the series. Let's go over to Vegeta. Mary, your thoughts on Vegeta as a dad. Initial words, phrases. All I can think of is just tough. And I wish I had a stronger word than the word tough. Okay. Badass. 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 <laughs> it's a badass dad. All right. Heath, anything other than badass? Um, oh, gosh. There's a word I want to use, but it's probably not appropriate. Um, We'll, we'll just say hard. Okay. We'll hard to that. please. All right. Because, yes. Not impressed. Well, I was going to say emotionally and physically. Uh-huh. You were going to say abusive. Yes, <laughs> that right. is what I was going to say. Uh, all right, Mary, so a little more. You're saying he's a very tough dad, but as we see very late in the series, we, we kind of get this hint of it at the end of the Cell games. Right. But then at the during the Boo fight, we do see Vegeta is a loving father in some mm -hmm. capacity. He has a weird way of showing his love. That's why I say tough. Because that's what he kind of evolves into from being very distant and, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't care. You're just my spawn, whatever, mm -hmm. to, okay, I want you to actually be, you know, a good fighter 
and he's getting up jealous of go tens like you make sure you beat that kid mm-hmm. i don't want to lose right. to his son but i'm gonna put you through the ringer yeah, you know, yeah. to get there so you can be all you can be let me take you a little earlier mary to the end of the cell games like we were talking about we had all that build up of trunks like, why didn't you save me when was it garo or 19 was shooting right, up at him baby. and she was like i don't care whatever but then trunks is killed and Vegeta loses it and mm-hmm. flies in at Cell. What do you think the driving emotion there was? Was that the moment where he's like, oh, no, I do actually care that I have a son? Or is it something else? Is it just piss that my thing got hurt? Maybe both. I think he was acting maybe on a subconscious level. Okay. Maybe he, he himself was surprised at mm. how he went overboard yeah. at that moment. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Heath, what do you think about Vegeta's transformation into a quasi-loving father? I think he had to learn it. Yeah. I think it was... I learned it from watching you. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we see throughout the series all these backstory shots of King Vegeta. Yep. And Vegeta just being off by himself training. It seems like he never really had a father figure himself. Mm. So when he had a kid, he was just kind of like, well, pff, this is what I know. So this is what I'm going to do. Oh. But now he's on Earth and he sees other people being fathers and... I think, kind of like Mary said, subconsciously, he just kind of picked up on it. And all of a sudden, it was just like, wow, I care, but I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Right. Sort of thing. I mean, the whole thing with Majin Vegeta was him trying to suppress all of his actual emotions and almost convince himself that he doesn't care when his caring is struggling to break free from the charm there. That's Mm -hmm. that's an interesting dynamic. And we talk how Vegeta kind of turns into this lame character over the course of the Frieza into the cell, into the Boo arc. But I think there's some interesting stuff there. I still think Vegeta is probably one of the most different fathers that we see in the series. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Because he's just so uncharacteristic of what you think of. And he seems, I mean, I know GT doesn't count to a certain extent, but he becomes quite a doting father almost. He does, yeah. In GT, like begrudgingly so. Is that what it takes? You need a little girl? Yes. I think... Vegeta needs a, a little baby daughter to soften him up a little bit. Kicked him into overdrive. Yeah. Uh, Heath, you were talking about King Vegeta. I do want to talk about Bardock and King Vegeta real quick. Is it, and maybe even Pyragus to some extent, in terms of science, is it if my son is strong, great, I accept them. And if he's not, then I don't care. And even if he is strong, I kind of don't care to some degree. I mean, King Vegeta doesn't mm-hmm. seem like he really is around. Bardock was pff, whatever. I don't even care. That seems to be the generalization that we get from that race. Mm -hmm. Um, Because that's what's always shown. Uh, It kind of, I think, harks back to the primitive nature of them. And that's what they're trying to bring out in it. Mm, So it's like, get my spawn out there. But once they're out there, that's probably good enough. Yes, I will I will let my genetics continue, but other than that, I don't really care. How about Parkus? I mean, he seems... I don't know if it's... Uh, he, that's tough to put into words. Like, Well, that's almost driven mostly by revenge. It is, and almost just self-preservation in a lot of yeah. ways, because he sees... And then it's ironic that his son kills him. Yeah, yeah, so... So... That's fun. Yeah, I hope that doesn't happen to me. That'd be nice. <laughs> if I get crushed in a sphere, you know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here. All right, let's go over to... <laughs> leave these brutal dads behind. Let's talk about one that I almost forgot about. Get it in. He's a daddy. I did forget that one. I totally did, too. He seems like... Okay, the word I come up with in my head is involved. Yes, you think he's uh, a good stay-at-home dad? I do. He's involved in her education and her activities. Maybe more the activities. Yeah. I have a sense that 18 probably helps with the education. Okay. Heath, what do you think? Savvy. Well, I think 18 helps with the disciplinary. She's the disciplinary. Side of things. Yeah, yeah. And Curly then is just kind of <laughs> the, yeah. the fun father that's there and... Yes, dear, I will go play. When It's the kind of situation when Myron wants to do something, she'll ask her dad instead of asking her mom, because dad's probably going to say yes. Exactly. Yeah, I think that's the kind of family they have going Whenever on. I think of him as a father, the image that always pops in my head, at least since it came out, was from the Jump Super Anime Tour special uh-huh. with the redone Chala yes. opening. Yes, And they're just out playing in the sand. Yep, and yep. Yeah. I, that, I think... 
is perfect of what their family environment is like. I think what we have going on is, as we saw in movie 11 and also in the TV series, 18 is just extorting Mr. Satan. So they have Mm -hmm. this incoming limitless supply of money. They don't have to do anything. So he's just hanging out on the beach with his daughter. Why not? I'd go as far far as saying that he's probably the best father you think he's the best dad the show, now that i think about it <laughs> probably sadly probably all right let's uh oh, oh i don't i have one for the list okay i don't know if it's on your list all right i'm gonna put it out there sure because i forgot about could in ox king oh you're oh my god yep. you're right i totally forgot about him too that's on my mental list all right so why don't i give you my thoughts since i forgot about him mm-hmm. um I'm going to say for the early part of the series, recovering. Recovering? The reason I say that is because... Make him sound like an alcoholic. (laughs) Maybe he is. I mean, he lost his wife and he's still trying to deal with that, but he's got his daughter who seems to just go out and do her own thing, whatever, and his palace is on fire and he's just trying... He's just trying to get by. He's a dad in a tough position. He's just trying to make ends meet, except that... He apparently has a ton of money and was terrible to his underlings. I don't know. I I think he's a conflicted, recovering old man. Heath, (laughs) please dig me out of this hole. Okay. Um, So my word would be, well, not recovering. Definitely not that. Okay. Um, Endangering. Okay. I can see that. Um, Just from keeping his daughter in a castle that's on fire, you know. (laughs) Right. That's probably not a good thing. Probably not the best place. It's kind of weird because we know that he trained with Kame Senen. Yep. So at some point, he's probably a really good guy. And then he turns into this ox king. Well, Kame Senen kind of says the same thing. Like, he's the one who kind of went off the rails a little bit. Yeah. And then he kind of comes back around and later on in the series is just like, he's always bringing presents oh, to yeah. all his grandkids. Yep. And he's just loving everything. He's making it's up almost lost like, time. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like, well, I kind of screwed up. With Sorry, Chi-Chi. I wasn't there for you, Chi Chi. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I'm going to just kids. buy a lot of stuff for my grandkids. <laughs> you know, I think about the movies for whatever reason. I don't know if it's just because I was dipping around movie one recently, but I just picture him always showing up with presents. Yeah, mm-hmm. always. Well, even at the uh, after Goku dies yep. and yep. Gohan's been taken, they try to show up. <laughs> He's just hanging out there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we kind of crossed over into grandfather territory, but that's okay. He's maybe not the best well, dad, but tried to make up for He's one of the few it. characters. Well, I guess I shouldn't say few, but one of the ones that you really think of more as a grandfather yeah. than a father. Right. Right. So here's another character that you kind of think of in a grandfather role, but technically he's the father to over a hundred. And that's Saichoro, oh, the great elder on planet Namek. What do you think about that? I mean, very different from Piccolo, where he's spitting out minions. This one, he's kind of trying to repopulate his race. Mary, mm-hmm. Saichoro as a dad. Wise sage. Wise sage, greatest of heaven. <laughs> Beloved. Marlon Brando. <laughs> Marlon Brando. <laughs> oh my God. Heath, what were you saying? I'm too distracted by Mary. <laughs> I said beloved. Beloved, okay. All right, someone else. Keep the conversation going here. What do you think about it? Is there anything else to say about him? I mean, his whole role is to be that father figure. Yeah. Like he's, everyone is to learn from him. He has to set an example. Uh Uh-huh. He, you know, makes the tough decisions. He does. Self-sacrificing as well. He's self-sacrificing. He did sacrifice Nail in a way. He's like, you got to go. Sorry. Send you off to your death. But Nail. (laughs) Nail. Let's not. Let's not. That's okay. not the real series. That doesn't count. But uh, I think I think he was good. He was a good dad. He, everything he was doing was in the best interest of the race. It's not a little distant, almost. Maybe but that's because he's he trying so stand hard up. being perfect that you don't really get to know <laughs> him. He couldn't stand up. Yes. <laughs> Is that what you said? Yes, that's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> wow i'm sorry have you ever seen him stand up no I exactly don't want no. to. i'd be scared you would just fall over all right uh let's keep it going with a little bit of the funny dads before we wrap up some of the serious dads dr garrow mary who is he the father of in a way he gave birth to definitely 16 and 19 of the mechanical variety but he was the true father father in a way of cell and then he you know brought 17 18 in so we'll say dr garrow let's just say just the father of cell there are so many words that could describe him all right mary give me one or two here dr garrow as a father to cell misguided misguided okay 
Heath, what do you think? I'd almost go with just stupid. <laughs> just <laughs> dumb dad. I mean, you're bringing these things that you can't even control into the world to get revenge. What, what do you think's going to happen? <laughs> I mean, but then at the same time, he's manipulative, trying to get them to, you know, especially like number... 17 18 uh-huh. even though apparently we're not counting them as children now well but, taking his children away yeah well, you can count anyone you want yeah I know. but i mean he makes explosive devices and put this puts them in them yep <laughs> and says if you don't do what i say i will blow you up never mind the I fact mean, <laughs> that they're infinitely faster than he is apparently yeah you just swipe it so i guess hellbent is a good way to describe him and just gets the better of him all right do you guys have any other dads before I we do. get to the big one? I do. All right. Who else you got? Mr. Satan. Mr. Satan. That's a great choice. I don't know how I forgot about him. He's both a dad and a granddad. I know. Maybe I was thinking about him more in the grandfather role, uh, specifically in GT. Uh, I don't remember. Maybe it's Super 17-ish, them at a restaurant having ice cream together, and he's just mm-hmm. doting. Doting is a good word. That's how I will do him as a grandfather. But as a father... Um, well, I think he is kind of similar. Oh, oh, I got it. I got it. Naive. He's naive as a father because he thinks he knows Videl, but he doesn't actually know what she's capable of. And it kind of ties in some of what you were using to describe Ox King and mm-hmm. that you know, he's recently. Lost his wife. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, now he is the sole parental unit. Right. And he's still got and all these other obligations. <laughs> oh, all right. Heath, what do you think about him? I think he's. He's loving. He just doesn't know how to show it right away. Mm. You know, he obviously cares, but he doesn't know what to do. Yeah. I, which I think really throws back to what you were talking about of maybe the mother was more of a figure early on that we don't see. And also now he mm-hmm. has to do it. He doesn't know what to do. Right. So well, I don't. He's, he's busy. Yeah. But then when grandkids come along, I mean, spoils them like crazy. Right. And he's scared because they're all stronger than him by a lot. I would say he's overprotective. Overprotective. That's really good. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, with, with Gohan coming onto the scene, oh my God, Who's boys! This boy? You know, he would be the most perfect boyfriend that any mother or father would be happy to have in their home. Yeah. Yep. He's such a sweetie and he's smart and he's polite. And yet he's like throwing a shit fit because mm-hmm. you know, it doesn't matter if he's got a good personality. It's, oh my God, boy. Touching daughter, eek, spending too much time together. Yeah. Uh, but all they're doing is teaching how to fly. <laughs> it's totally safe. Is that what we're calling it crime? now? Hey, baby, you want to learn how to fly? I can show you. Do you want me to leave? <laughs> Anyone have any other dads? There are probably we, a couple um, others, but. Are we going to talk about Piccolo? Do you want to talk about him? He's more of a fatherly role than a father himself. Yeah. But I, I think that falls back more on someone else. Yeah. More than Piccolo. Yeah. I mean, he kind of gets the the job for a while and he's thought of in that capacity, but we'll kick him to the side because no biologicalness going on here. Mm-hmm. Sorry, dude. We we could go with uh, King Cold. Oh, mm-hmm. King Cold's a really good one. Uh, I would say he's actually proud of his kids, but almost to the detriment of logic. Well, he's proud until he's killed. And he's like, oh, all right, yeah. I want to join up. <laughs> It's oh, like, well. oh, how quickly you turn on your kid. Yeah. Now yeah. that he's dead. Well, yeah, now that he's dead. Is there anything else to say about I mean, he's only there for an <laughs> episode, <laughs> like a chapter or so. No one knew he existed until he showed up. Right. And that didn't last very long. So proud of, impressed with, until dead. And apparently he does care to some extent because he actually went and found Frieza. I don't know. Did kind of <sighs> built him back up. Well, you know, Kula's all like, well, my brother totally f that up do we know that king cold actively saw him out or was it just some of frieza's minions that happened upon his remains i always got the impression that they kind of went looking for him and he was just there i don't know that was actually more than any saiyajin would do yeah go looking for their partners because they'd be all like oh you lost in battle you're weak yeah not worth looking after huh Sorry, Nappa. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> we're going to bring Raditz back. No, we're not. Stop. <laughs> Stupid. Um, Any other fathers? Well, I got I two really more, that. so we'll definitely hit this okay. one right here. Mary, you were talking about Gohan mm-hmm. as a father. I feel like we don't see him a lot. We really don't. Way. 
we really don't. Pan just kind of goes off on her own. Even at the end of the manga, she's just doing her own thing. Gohan's not really doing anything with her. She's running off with Grandpa. And then in GT, she's with Grandpa the entire time. I don't know. Well, Gohan's really busy researching. He is. How to save the world. Yeah. Or whatever it is he's doing. <laughs> whatever it is yeah. great scholars do in the Dragon World. Exactly. Yeah, I don't know how to describe Gohan as a dad because we don't really see him in an active fatherly role that much. So maybe he's the worst dad. I beg to but differ. But he's also a dad that, you know, we don't really see. Yeah. So can you really judge him? Mm. All right. Fair. Because it, it's such a narrow span at the end of the series. Right, right. There's so many things. And then in GT, get. he gets taken over by Baby. Right, and... right. Okay. All right. You, you got to get a jail free card for I know, a little bit. I know. I like Gohan, so I got to defend him. Okay. All right. Well, let's do the big one then. <laughs> Son Goku. We'll just let Mary take this Father one. Father of the century. <laughs> Mary, I think there are a lot of fair points on both sides of the judging Goku coin. And I'm not blind to that. So if we did have to get some of your initial raw thoughts, though, how would you categorize him? Neglectful. Neglectful. Do you want to throw a positive term in the mix? I do. Uh but you can't supportive. Think, supportive. Okay. But that wasn't the first thing that came to mind. First, it was negative. Yes. All right. Heath, how would your order go? It would be negative positive or positive negative? Oh, I don't know. I'm really torn on this one because I, I think both sides are almost equal because I think when he's neglective, mm -hmm. it's not always completely intentional because I think he honestly doesn't know <laughs> that he's neglecting people you know yeah does that make sense yeah yeah it does but at the same time you can see that he really does care for his kids but then he's also like hey gohan why don't you go face cell and <laughs> you know maybe die i don't know uh -huh. i don't know it, i think it really goes back to the the cyan roots mm-hmm is really what they're trying to hone in there, but... I think that's what's coming out know. there. When people talk about Goku being a bad father, and most of what they talk about is he leaves to train with Oob, or he's always that's dead. That's it. But It's well, the end of the series that kills it. Like, uh, any any positive buildup he would have had throughout the entire series, which, and there are a lot, uh -huh. it's just destroyed with how the series ends. Mm -hmm. It's like, this is what you're doing <laughs> to your poor family. So, okay. the, is there... There's nothing good to say about the end in terms of Goku being a father then, right? It's like he randomly decided, oh, this is going to be my son now. <laughs> right. Mm. I mean, if you look at it from an overall like perspective, you can kind of see where Goku's coming from of the greater good. I need to save the earth. Make sure there's some sort of defense established. But at the same time, <laughs> complete sacrifice to his family but couldn't he take him home or something i know it just seems so yeah. random a la nekomajin z5 where oob is there at the Sone family house that would have made far more sense well, i think you need to take that up with Toriyama. i will i want to take you guys back to the cell games however because i think that's something really important to harp on the whole i'm sending my son out there like goku's entire shtick was the entire time, this isn't about me. It's about how awesome my kid is. And I'm going to just kind of let it be a surprise to everyone. Look how great Gohan is. Isn't he amazing? And you've got Piccolo standing there being like, your son is frightened. Your son is not strong enough. Look at what this is doing to him. How do you not see this? And then finally, Goku has this moment where he's got those wide eyes. He's, he's like, crap. He's he like, realizes. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. So does him realizing it make up for how terrible he's being in that moment? Or is it still so, so bad that he can't recover from that? Well, it's good that he became self-aware. I'll give him that much. Okay. Because he could have still remained as ignorant and naive about that sort of thing as he's always been. And taking the, no, everything's going to work out just fine. It's cool. Like, no, not this time. I think it, Goku thought he knew his son so well. The Piccolo knew him better. But because of what Gohan did, was Goku right the whole time? Maybe. He kind of was. And Goku kind of had to make up for it by sacrificing his life. Yeah. It's like, well, this is kind of my fault. So. It, <laughs> it didn't go exactly as I hoped. You could almost take the fatherly perspective on that of he didn't even... Gohan wasn't ready. Because once he got that power, I mean, it went to his head. And he just toyed with Cell. Right. Almost like 
Goku as a father didn't show him how to harness it, how to control his power, mm. keep his motions in check. That's true. Goku was so, so concerned about getting to that power and he was controlling it himself in the room of spirit and time. We saw him with the stage two and stage three really understanding what all of that meant and what it was going to do to their bodies and their state of mind. And he sort of explained it to Gohan, but he didn't show that to Gohan. So... Bad job, Goku. I'm wagging my finger at you. Bad job. Bad daddy. Anything else we can say about him? But I mean, these are all the bad things, I but think, um, there's a lot of love There's there. a lot of good stuff, and I think one of the best examples of Goku as awesome dad, completely awesome dad, is in that filler arc in the anime before, before the, the Cell, Cell games. games. Yeah, yeah. It's like they're out fishing and hanging, and at birthday party, like, oh man, Goku, you decided to take this one week to be the ideal dad. I disagree. I think all of that was just his tactic, we have to stay super science. True, but he's kind of killing two birds with one stone. He's multitasking. Is he enjoying it? If he enjoys it, that means he's being a good dad. It's like, well, if we got to do this, let's at least have fun. Right. And I'll get to know you, son, because I kind of didn't I kinda know don't. you from like age five through age eight. Right. At all. Well, then you've got the Goten whole thing of, well, I'm pretty much dead. Right. The whole beginning of your life. And the first time you meet me is at a tournament to fight people. And you're frightened of me, but I will hug you anyway. That's a great scene. It's just, it's, it's cute. It's more a Goten scene than it is a Goku scene. Because then Goku leaves again. So Goten really doesn't know his dad. No. At all. But it's kind of weird because it gets played off as though Goten really loves him and he kind of does know him. Mm. I don't know. It's weird writing, I guess, right there. Toriyama can't show emotions. Not no. not counting the filler arc that we were just talking about. I guess the best time Goku is a dad is at the beginning of Z. Yeah. Where he's like fighting for Gohan. He's trying to protect him. Um, but then it all kind of shit hits the fan after that. It seems like Gohan probably had a really good, you know, first couple years of his life. <laughs> yeah, I think he did. Yeah. Then Raditz showed up. Thanks, uncle. Ruined that my all life. Downhill. All right. Does that wrap up our discussion on dads? It does. Well, I, you could almost... No, I won't go there. We, we could throw Toriyama into the mix. No, let's not. He's a father. <laughs> I feel like we don't know anything about him. Well, we know enough after reading some of these old interviews. Yes, we do. Oh, yeah. You mentioned one of them. <laughs> the, I'm so perverted that I want to... Dot, dot, dot. So... <laughs> Toriyama is a subject for another day. So what we're going to do before we wrap up this episode, we got a couple emails, actually. Let's answer them. <laughs> Heath, uh, this is mostly for you and I. This is from James. Hey, Kanzenju crew. I was looking through some old issues of the American Shonen Jump, the July 2006 issue, and I noticed an interview with Toriyama in the issue. I know you have translated interviews on the site, but do you have interviews with the American Shonen Jump somewhere, or were these just taken from a Japanese issue or guide? Thanks. Heath, there were a couple interviews with Toriyama in the American Shonen Jump. I think the debut issue even had some Q&As from him. <laughs> um, maybe just explain kind of what our non-official stance on this stuff is. Uh, if it was not already readily available in English, we give it to you in English. If it was, then you should be able to get it somewhere i guess and also you know the whole they printed it it's their thing we don't really like taking other people's words verbatim just slapping them up especially in something that you were supposed to buy right it's usually if it's an american thing in english first we're not going to put it up we want to do some kind of work so we can say we sort of did something rather than just copy paste look here you go I kind of disagree with that. Yeah. Because it's so old and how many people actually have these issues for the sake of preserving information. Right. Well, that's the thing that we do kind of deal with where, I mean, inside baseball stuff behind the scenes here. But I feel the same kind of thing about the Chosen Shoe stuff where it's it's right now, but it's also in Japanese and it's not in English. And if it were to be licensed, we would probably take some of that stuff down as we did with some of our stuff back in the day. Do you think there's a point you hit is it five years? Is it 10 years with American Shonen Jump stuff where you do want to archive that? Because I we want to be an archive, but at what, what point does it cross over into not okay? What do you think, Mary? It depends on how hard it is to obtain this stuff yeah. and the market penetration of said content. Right. It's weird. This is stuff we think about when we post content. And there's no real well, answer. Well, then you also run into the other things of what about other countries? Yeah, right. 
I mean, how, where do we draw the line? Just because we're located in the U.S. and everything is in English, does that mean that we have to also do everything that came out here in English? Well, we want so, we want everything eventually. So we'll do that yeah. eventually. So I'm still unclear as to whether yeah. or not those interviews in Shonen Jump were just translated Japanese interviews or if Shonen Jump in America went out to him for an interview. Uh, I think one of them was a Shonen Jump original. Uh, I, th- I was going to say it's kind of half and half. Yeah, yeah. And then I don't know if this was the Dragon Ball Collector issue. I can't remember, but I believe one of them is a reprint of his interview in Daisenshu One. If I remember well, correctly, they also did Daisenshu One. Exactly, so that exists. It's weird. So those are kind of our thoughts. No real answer. Uh, let's go on to another one here. This is actually on Facebook. Raul says, I'm currently listening to the podcast special on all the video game music. What a long ride down memory lane. This is amazing. If time allowed, you guys should totally do special on the score to the series. I know I've got my favorites. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Mary, you oh, talked okay. about it last time we were here. Heath, did you listen to the whole episode? What did you think of it? I loved it. Yeah. It was really good. It's always neat to hear everybody's perspectives. You know, and I liked in the previous podcast, you guys kind of like recounted what happened Mm -hmm. uh, after you came back from Animazement. And I totally agree with Mary of we were all living kind of like the same moment. And it's weird how all of our experiences are almost kind of the same. Mm -hmm. But in a way, everyone was doing the same thing. The internet was the same for everybody. Right. It was a smaller internet back then. So we were all visiting Dr. Garrow's laboratory. We were all visiting Susinshu. So it was... It was really. It's always fun to go down memory lane like that sometimes. Yeah. Because even you yourself kind of forget things, and you, mm-hmm. it all kind of comes back to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, Greg talking about the stuff in the back of magazines. I mean, I always remember that, but hearing someone else talk about that brings me back to that moment. It's mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, that's totally good. So thank you, Raul. We will definitely do another one. Uh, tons of people, the younger audience, are like, I loved it. Let's do the next generation of games. That'd I want so in on cool. the next one. That'd be cool. So no promises. I think what my plan will be, because I want to do these kinds of episodes, I can kind of work on them leading up to something and kind of put it out when we're away. Maybe September. That'd be great. I think. That'd let's, be awesome. Let's look at doing... Give me time to think of an answer because I'm not... <laughs> that next generation I, I, I of games. I definitely have like songs that I like, but nothing hits me the way that that previous generation, because uh-huh. I wasn't working on my site really when... Um, 2002 know, the, 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 on that generation of games were out so I have nothing to tie me back to oh well I was listening to this song a lot while I was doing XYZ it was just that like it was more, it was just more like Mike's playing the games house. Yeah. if anything it's more like yeah we listened to this music while cleaning the apartment back in like 2005 2006 you mean 2007 last week <laughs> and last week um, you were loving the Budokai 3 soundtrack. Okay, you know what? I think that's going to be my story. Okay. All right. Save it. Focus so, on that sort of thing. That's uh, potential plans. I think what I would like to do next is the uh, revival generation of Dragon Ball video games, 2002 onward. Uh, and we'll try to get some younger folks on the show there sharing some memories as well, because I think that's important. Uh, and then maybe we can dip into some other stuff. So there you go. We got one more question. Mary, this is sort of for you in a way. Don't have a name to go with this one here. Uh, hey, Consensu team, I had a question for you. I was wondering if you were planning on covering the Harmony Gold dub of Dragon Ball for a podcast episode in the near future. I would really like to hear your opinion on one of the first English dubs of the first part of the series, even though some of the things that exist of it is a dub of both movies one and three. A little confusing at the end there, but yeah, I mean, Mary, this is one of your oldest claims to fame. It is. Um, did we not talk about this on the podcast? I don't. I think would find it extremely hard to believe that we didn't touch upon it at some point. We have, but I don't think we have done. This is the episode where we dedicate a topic to it. We should. We totally, we totally should. should. And I am so thrilled that I have a copy of that the movie three. You have, yeah. Yeah, I should have. Co- I had access to movie one. I do not know why I did not copy it. I think it's because at the time I was like. Oh, well, it's just a recap of the first 13 episodes of the series, and I don't want to waste a VHS on that. I know the story well enough. Right. And in hindsight, I'm like, God, what the <laughs> what the F what was I thinking? I needed this for, you know, all time. Yeah. But I can't even say that I, I am the one that saw it on TV or anything. I got it from a, a friend who, right. you know, she went on to help me join, uh, to help me form the anime club in high school. Um, 
So she's the one that taped it off the TV and then loaned it to me so I can make a copy of it. Right. And, you know, I put up some of the funnier audio clips on my website. So it was, Wait, wait, what's the lunch line about spaghetti or something? I, you're the lasagnas to die for. That's it, yes. <laughs> and I did that so accurately, it really frightened yeah, me. Yeah, you took me back there. <laughs> Heath, uh, I mean, we'll do a real topic on this at some point. I don't know why we haven't in the, what, have we been doing the podcast for like seven years now, eight years? Heath, have you ever seen it? I have never seen it. Oh my it. God, we'll have to... I think, uh, Mike, did we ever take the VHS and convert it? Yeah, digitally? I converted it. Yeah. I thought, okay. I've only, I've seen clips. Probably from Mary's yeah. site. Yeah. I, that's about it. That's like the best non Trunks content I have on my website. <laughs> and what's funny is it, no, it had nothing to do with Trunks, but you're like, I have it. Nah. It was like, I got some rare shit, y'all. Good stuff. This is for the world. <laughs> All right. That's going to bring us to a close. Mary, thank you for joining us talking about daddy. That was great. Thank Who's your you daddy? Thank you for having me on this show. <laughs> Who's your daddy? Who's your Dragon Ball daddy? Goku. If you had Who's, to choose... Here, oh, we'll wrap okay. it up. Krillin, if you had to choose a dad, you want... All right. He'd be so fun. All right. Thank you. He, thank you for joining us. If you had to choose a dad from the series, who would it be? Dr. Brief. Dr. Brief. Uh, so that leaves me. My name is Mike. If I had to choose a dad, I would go with Gohan because he's never around. I can just go do whatever the hell I want to do. No repercussions. But Dr. Brief gives you all sorts of money. I know, which is kind of creepy. I think at the end of the episode, we have lost Heath. Mary, can you tell the kids where they can find Kanzenshu? You can find Kanzenshu online at K-A-N-Z-E-N-S-H-U-U dot com. That is correct. Get all on their forum, which is pretty big, if, I'm, if I understand correctly. And Facebooks. Facebooks, the Twitters. I think Heath actually is still updating the Google Plus, so good on him. Wow. All nice. that stuff. Um, that's it. We're going to bring this to a close. This was 336, I think it was. So we'll check it back in a week or so, 337. So for all these folks, again, my name is Mike Vegito EX. Check you later. <laughs>
Matau Maika Come with you, Tom. So long, boy.